Right, so uh, here's part, what are we on? Part nine, I think, of the Astrovan. Um, so in the last part, I just briefly did a, um, a bit about the arch and the way that I rubbed it back. And I only just rubbed back the rust and then I was on about uh, putting the Q rust on it and stuff, which I did. But anyway, it escalated quite badly. Uh, so what I had done is I'd rubbed back the, the rust to the bare metal and then put the Q rust on, but I never feathered the paint work. I should have done that before I put the Q rust on. Uh, so as I say, I'm not a body guy and every time I do it, I always realize what I should have done better, but I don't do it often enough for it to stick in my brain if that makes sense. But Anyway, so I obviously had to feather it back, um, which I did after the Q rust was on, which took most of the <laughs> Q rust off. Uh, and there was tiny little stone chips, just random on the arch higher up. So when I was feathering it, it, it all in, and I would end up having to hit one of these stone chips, the paint just flaked off and then it just became a disaster because then I had to go and and, f and start to feather that bit in. So I ended up just doing the whole bit of arch. Um, so what should have, what I thought anyway would be just maybe an hour's buffing up, giving it a treatment and a lick of paint. It's definitely not what happened. I ended up spending up six hours on it. Would you believe six hours on that stupid bit of arch? Uh, so that's what happens when you uh, it's all a learning experience, I suppose. I know the, the professional body guys out there could probably do it in less time, but on the other hand, that's why body work costs so much, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I, put, I, I rubbed it all back, then I treated it again, and then I primed it. I did a, I did a bit of filler as well, because there was quite a bit of pitting on the rusty bit, so I skimming a filler on. And I hate doing the filler work because every time I do it, it doesn't matter how well I think I do it, as soon as I put paint uh, or, or primer on, I always see a little bit that just needed a bit more filler. Uh, and I've done it again. <laughs> but it's tiny. Uh, I must be getting better at it because the, the little bit of filler is less and less every time. But uh, it's, I mean, it's good enough for this thing just now anyway. Uh, and then so I, I hit it with some etch primer and I've ordered up paint and filler primer so we'll hopefully get this for the that for the weekend. Um, so here here it is. I'll put pictures up on Instagram. Um, and it probably looks a bit patchy and stuff, but I've actually been away picking up parts for um, the next project. Um, so when the paint comes, I'll have to clean it all and uh, scuff it back with some fine grip paper. Uh, try to make it sound like I know what I'm doing, but uh, yeah, I haven't got a clue. I'm just winging it. But anyway, I'm sure it'll look better than it did. It already looks better to me than the rusty bowl, so yeah, well, I'll update you once the paint and everything comes. Um, so, when I was driving up to get these other parts, I noticed a uh, little bit of scabby rust on my wiper arms. So I'll make a note of that, I'm to take them off and clean them up, give them a lick of paint. And um, the door cards a bit chewed up and I'm pretty sure it's the same door cards in the five door turbo so I'm gonna go and check that and see if they're the same and in better condition and then while I was thinking that while I was driving up yesterday I thought well I um, I really I'm really big into into music uh, punk punk rock uh, metal uh, so I grew up in the uh, my youth was in the the new metal days which was great uh, so I'm big into music, I, I play guitar and I play drums in bands and stuff. Uh, so the, the speakers in this van are not good. 
and I've had some pioneers speakers sitting up on the back shelf for a while. I used to have in my old vector, one of my old vector bees, and I remember that they were great and they were loud, <laughs> and that's what I like. So, if I'm taking the door card off, I might try uh, one of these speakers in there, uh, and hopefully get some better, better quality sound from the from the uh, the jukebox. I think they're still sitting here. But I mean, these things have been sitting here for so long. Oh, that's six pounds. Uh, it was these ones, the door tweeters. I don't know if they'll still work. Where they? 120 watts each. Or 120 watt max here. So yeah, they'll, they'll be pretty loud. Uh, and I'm sure, because that's the speaker there, I'm sure these are, I can't remember if I if they're the original Vectra door surrounds, speaker surrounds, or if I got them made up or bought them. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go and try that. But I'm going to go see if this uh, door card in the five doors matches this one. Same. Um, it's got a chrome handle. Very fancy. And this one's just black. Uh, but yeah, it's just... That bit's a bit of an eyesore, and this one isn't damaged. But the uh, the card does need a good clean up because uh, that one looks clean, and it is clean apart from this bit here. There's a lot of patch on there. So I might go and just um, I'll go and clean this up. And I'll get the driver's one as well. So the I could just swap the handles over, but. Uh, chrome's maybe a nice touch. Um, uh, 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 God, I can't get my words. Out. If I'm going to change the speakers over, I'll obviously have to take the driver's one off too. So I might as well put uh, the other card on. I'll dig it out first, make sure it's in decent condition. Because if not, I'll just change the handle. Um, yeah, so I'm going to crack on with that. Um, I still haven't done. The tow bar electrics, but I'll show you them while I'm here. Uh, well, I'll need my torch because uh, I'll probably I'll probably end up just doing these the wiring off camera. But so here it is. Yeah, so they've just it's all just been twisted together. See there. Um, and I need to replace this bit anyway because it's, it's faulty. And then I'll just tidy all that wiring up because it's, oh, it's horrendous. I just, I just hate, hate horrible wiring. It's got to be neat. What's the point? You might as well make it neat and label it up so you know what you're doing the next time. Um, yeah, so there's the. A new bit. No. I'll probably just do that off camera, like I say. Yeah, no one's going to want to watch that. I um, I'll just solder the wires and and, and heat shrink it. Um, and I've actually gotten these. Uh, you maybe seen them. So the heat. I'll oh, just show you. You know, I'm like explaining stuff. But it's basically a solder and heat shrink. You just Join the wires up and then uh, you just heat it with a, a lighter or a heat gun. Uh, and um, it just it melts the solder for you and then it shrinks the insulation around it at the same time and it's, it's perfect. And it's good because it saves me digging out the I've got a gas solder and iron. Uh, it's a pain in the it's a pain in the backside sometimes, and then I've got an, another one that's just electric, but it's uh, like the screw screwdriver type, and it's actually too big for most of the stuff I solder, so it just makes a mess of it. So this way is good, nice, clean, uh, and quick, and less mess, which is always good. Um, yeah, so I'll go and see if these speakers are going to fit.
Right, we've got the screws in, and I've tested it, and it works perfectly. Uh, so I'm just going to go and put the door card on, and um, make sure it fits over. I'm sure it will. I'll give it a quick clean. It sits as proud as that one. So cool. So we get the tunes banging now. Well, it looks like my idea might be uh, not happening. Uh, so this is the original door card. There's a bit of damage there. Uh, oh, I can clean that off. So I was going to put the this one on because this is a mint door card with the chrome handle. But the driver's one with the chrome handle is wrecked. It's all, uh, it's all squashed across the top, all marked, dented. Um, it's no good. So then I thought, well, just swap the handles around. What? <laughs> That's a no go now. This is a. I thought this was an Allen key. Not shown to you. But it's actually a roll pin. Uh, so they must just uh, tap that in from the factory because it goes right through to the top, which you just can't. You just can't get into. You need to pull that out. Um, and there's no way. I tried little vice grips on it, uh, but it's just not. It's just not budging. Um, so it looks like I'll have to put this door card back on. So yeah, that's a that's a shame. Uh, well, at least we got the speakers uh, changed over, if nothing else, and we'll learn that can't change that without any drastic measures. It's all plastic welded in here, and I'm not gonna go through the hassle of doing that just for a door handle. Uh, it's not really worth the hassle. So I'll just clean this up and put it back on. So driver's door speaker in now, so I'm just going to put it back together and I've tested it with a bit of my um, data remember. Sounds good. So yeah, good. So that's the speakers in now, they're working fine. Um, it's a shame about the door cards, or the passenger one anyway, but um, it is what it is. Um, so I've just got to wait for the paint to come to finish the arch. <clears throat> I've got to solder the tow bar and I've got to change the or look into the coolant temperature sensor on the engine. But uh, since I cleared the code, uh, which would have been yesterday now, I've, I've been away picking up parts and stuff, and um, it's never come back on. So. Uh, I'll not worry too much about that just now, I'll look into it in the future. Um, so yeah, that's uh, a little bit of work done on the Astro van, keeping it up to scratch. Uh, there's obviously still plenty to do, but nothing that's um, going to stop it working anytime soon. So I finally got the paint done on the uh, arch, um, and give it a couple of coats of lacquer. Uh, what I, I did miss, uh, uh, what I did do wrong is I used a tin of clear coat lacquer that I had sitting on the shelf. Uh, I'd been there for a while, so it wasn't just the greatest. Um, so that'll teach me not to do that again. <clears throat> anyway, so I did it yesterday. Um, and I've left it overnight in the garage to sort of harden a bit. And then I came out this morning and used a bit of Maguire's cutting compound and then some Auto Glim uh, resin polish with a buffer, um, which has made it look far better because you could see a line. You probably still can, just where the sort of, uh, the lacquer sort of gone over. Uh, but yeah, it's it's better than it was, better than the rust. What I'll do is. I'll leave it a week and then I'll um, give it a fine wet sand to, uh, to try and blend it in and then polish it again. It should look better. But as usual when I do bodywork, 
when I finish it, I always um, see what I could have done better. And there's, there's a little mark there that should have been filled. And there's a couple of little pity marks there that I should have filled, but I ran out of filler. Um, and I couldn't, I couldn't be bothered buying anymore. And there's cuts, there's loads of little nicks here, but I'm not bothered about them. I just wanted to stop the rust. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, body work's not my thing. Um, I, I really just um, wanted to stop the rust uh, and make it look a bit more presentable because it was a bit of an eyesore. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's done that, it's good. I, I, I don't know how long it'll last, <laughs> if it'll start blistering up again, but if it does, I'll let you know. I'll show it and we'll see how long it lasts. Um, but I, I, I didn't actually put, I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but I didn't put as much effort into it as I have done on, on motors in the past. Uh, and the, the, most, the biggest reason for that is I'm so busy that I just had to get it off the ramp as, as quick as I possibly could because I've always got something on here. I need the ramp, yeah, which is why I'm trying to move away from this because I can never get my own stuff done. Um, but if the, the if it was the GSI, I wouldn't I wouldn't bother doing that. I would just put it to a, a professional, a guy that I use for bodywork. Uh, it's just bodywork, as you probably know, is quite expensive, so it kind of puts you off um, doing it. It makes you want to attempt it yourself. But um, for me. Yeah, it's cost a lot of money, but when you do it, when you send it to someone that knows what they're doing and they're doing a professional job, when you get it back, yeah, you're relieved of quite a few hundreds or thousands of pounds, but uh, you just, or I do anyway, I just feel happier. I feel better that it's done right and it's money well, well spent. <clears throat> Not so good if you spend that sort of money and you get some monkey to do it for you. That, uh, Sort of like um, them GSI wheels, although I mean it was only two hundred quid, I suppose. Uh, but um, but that's what they charged me. There was no discussion of price beforehand, so yeah. So that ties up that just now. So this hasn't moved since the last video. It's been it's sitting there to get washed. I just I'm just struggling to get get out of the bit just now. Uh, I've got my I've got new tyres delivered today from my trailer or yesterday, so I need to get them on. I've um, got the new winch as well. Uh, nice two ton winch there. <clears throat> it's originally a three ton on here, but um, two ton will be plenty fine. I just had to. Uh, modify it a bit for it to fit. Anyway, here's, this, here's the uh, fleet. So here's the one I just bought. Template. 
Um, and we'll do this. I'll take it into the garage and then we'll see what it needs. <laughs> 